Coming to you from the International Headquarters, Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2022 Good Guys Columbus event, and I came across this very cool 1965 C10 I think you're all going to like. Let me get the camera turned around, and we'll take a quick look at it. Uh, yeah. Cool. Now, all right, let's talk about it. It's 65, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we just got back from Syracuse uh, this weekend, too, with that truck, so we went straight from Columbus to Syracuse with it, and... Uh, we were a, a top six finalist for the Winfield Award out there with, with that truck, so that was a pretty cool experience to, uh, you know, get to be part of that group and to meet Gene and that, and uh, it was just a cool deal, so. Yeah, no doubt about it. The truck's got a great look. How long has it been done? Uh, we debuted it in 2019, so, uh, you know, it's, you know, in COVID, you know, we kind of lost a year, so it was, we debuted it at SEMA, uh, we were top 40 for the battle of builders out there top 10 truck and then you know unfortunately the the truck wasn't running it was a mad dash to get it uh get it done for sema we had it in the mother's uh mother's outside booth out there and you know we couldn't go any further than that top 40 but then with 2020 kind of being a, a messed up year they did sema through a digital platform the battle of the builders and because of the, the way the builds were, they actually let us qualify again in 2020 with that truck. And the fact that it was running and driving at that point, we ended up going all the way through the top 12 with it and actually winning. They shipped the truck out to California, and we did the, the Battle of the Builders thing out there uh, through COVID and ended up winning the overall top truck for that, for that which was, was pretty cool to get a second you know, shot at it with the truck running and driving. No doubt about it. It's a good-looking truck. Tell me some of the, the modifications that have been made to it. There's a ton of stuff, and, you know, it, with it's almost hard without looking at it, but I guess if you don't mind, I'm going to go into the, a quick kind of background because that will kind of lead to some of the modifications that were done. The owner, Mark, Mark Austin, he, uh, he, he bought that truck about 25 years ago. He did the initial, the roost chop two and a half inches, two, two in the back and two and a half in the front, and uh, he did that initial chop himself probably 20 years ago on the truck and uh, a few other modifications to it. He uh, ended up selling it. You know, I, I guess he, he kind of gave up on the project and sold it, traded to a buddy for an S10 at the time, ended up finding the truck. It had changed hands three times. Uh, 14 years later, he bought it back in pretty much the same condition he sold it and uh, kind of picked back up on the project. So, you know, one of the things he wanted at the time was uh, a, a pro street truck, really, and so, you know, he wedge sectioned the hood and did some other stuff to it. The body has actually been sectioned width wise on it as well. So it's five inches narrower at the grill and stock width back at the tailgate. And uh, he was kind of quarter scale on the thing. But, you know, the project got stalled again. And uh, I met a good friend of his up at the Syracuse Nationals in 2017, I guess it was. Next thing I know, he put me on the phone with Mark and we're talking at the show. And he's like, you're the guy that's got to build my truck. And a few months later, he shipped it from Missouri uh, out to Pennsylvania here. We ended up stripping down to bare metal and just redoing a lot of the metal work that was done on it. The doors had been suicided, but, you know, the hinge mechanisms were a mess. We had to replace all that, put new door skins on it. We ended up basically just junking the bed that was on it, bought new bed sides, built a new tailgate from scratch, built all the inner bed panels from scratch. The, the hood's been modified. The, the actual sides of the hood have been welded to the fenders. and The whole nose is almost like a one-piece clip that comes off, but the center of the hood was cut out and restructured, and we used uh, some 55 Chevy billet hood hinges from the Ring Brothers and made the hood open uh, that way. And, uh, really cleaned up the front end of the truck and that and uh, just kind of gave it a unique look. But So there's, there's just a lot of subtle stuff done throughout it. Uh, the whole grill, uh, it's a factory grill, but it's been reworked. The whole center was cut out, and there was some depth added. We added about two inches of metal to the opening of the grill to give it some depth, and then uh, cut the whole front end of the truck and recessed the grill back about another inch and a half into the front of the truck to, to add some more depth there. And the front bumpers, I think we started with two or three 67 Camaro bumpers and really cut them up to uh, 
to do that. And then the rear bumper, we started with a handful of 69 Camaro bumpers, cut them all up to build them. And so just a lot of, a lot of little unique things on it, you know? Holy so. smokes, are you kidding me? I, I mean, yeah, to walk up to it, sure, the first thing that sticks out, suicide doors and a hole in the hood, right? But yeah. other than that, you think to yourself, it's just, it's a really straight, really nice, that generation Chevy, Chevy pickup truck. You, I mean, yeah. I would never have ever, ever guessed that there was that much work or that the front end is actually narrower than the rear end. Yeah, it doesn't look it until you put it next to another truck, you know, and you know, and one of the things that we struggled with it, I mean, it's funny that truck looking at it is not necessarily my personal style. Like a lot of the, you know, the builds we do here a little bit, I don't want to say simpler, but, uh, there's a lot. And that truck falls along that line. So you don't, people like it. They appreciate it. It looks clean, it, but they don't necessarily realize all that was done to it. And that's kind of like a lot of our other builds. You know, there's a lot of little details that you can stare at one of them and say, man, this thing just looks bad out of really know why I like it so much until you really start, you know, noticing or, or talking about all the things that were done to it. So yeah, along those lines, it, it fits right in with all of our other builds, but that truck is just really in your face and a lot of other stuff we build isn't. And so we struggled with, trying to still give him his wild crazy in your face pro street truck he wanted but also make it something that one we were proud to have come out of our shop and that i also felt could still be relevant in the industry as far as like competing at shows and and things like that you know so you know there's still a lot of pro street stuff being built out there but you're not seeing it winning shows as much or being in magazine features and things like that so we tried to just modernize it maybe bring a, a pro touring approach into it as well you know so that's what i see i don't i don't necessarily see a pro street I, I the hole in the hood yes you know that's normally what you think of when you think of pro street but and the 20 by 15s on the back i mean it's a large tire with the mickey thompson but it on eats it. it up the truck eats it up to where it, I mean, it doesn't look like a cuda with that size of the tire on the yeah. back of it you know i mean it hides it well in the way that the way that you form the bed and everything there again i i think that you've got a, you've got a, a, a mix of a pro touring kind of street machine truck going yeah. on here i mean it's nailed i i mean i wouldn't be embarrassed of it that's for sure i'd be proud to drive oh, no. it every day yeah. but it gets so much attention and you know my wife jokes she's like you know it just goes to show that everything you like may not be what everyone else likes you know vice versa you know so it's just like here's something that you're on the fence about and the thing has just gotten so much attention on social media and magazine features won a ton of awards and it, yeah it's just really got i was surprised that at the reaction it got you know and you know like cutting the hole in the hood that i was so against doing that i tried talking him into putting like an inglese injection something that would fit under the hood of that I got, you know, the, the money that was spent on that, that injection, I, I understood why it wasn't getting changed out. So then I was dealt with, okay, well, how, how can I do this and still make it look good where we, it just isn't a big hole cut in the hood, you know? So we spent a lot of time uh, smoothing that injection out and, you know, basically bring it to the point where the intake could be polished, you know, and then painted it a satin charcoal gray. And I uh, really spent a lot of time kind of detailing out that opening in the hood just to, to give it some style, you know, I think really that it just wasn't a big hole cut in it, you know. And I, I think in the end it worked out well. You know? I think it looks, yeah, I think it's got a commercial look to it, um, a finished look. You know, the hole, you, it was obvious that there's a lot of time spent not only thinking about how to put that hole in there, where to put it, how big to make it, all those kind of things, but the execution of the same. No, I, again, I, there, isn't, there isn't a thing on this truck I would change. You, you know, nothing, have nothing look out of place, you know, and I think a lot of the vehicles we build, that's what I, I really strive to have, just everything make sense and be cohesive and, you know, not have it be something that, somebody stands back and they're like why, why did they do that you know why did they put those wheels on it or whatever just try to make everything just just make sense and flow you know you know we kind of carried that through the interior as well um, you know when i got the truck mark had already put a uh a 59 pallet dashboard in it so kind of ran with that just cleaned up what he did and smoothed it out and that you know we did want a modern uh kind of modern interior in it so uh, chris at fox customs in Pottstown, pennsylvania he handled that built the seats and the console and just everything did a really great job there would use the suede and the leather and a contrast stitching on it that really just uh turned out great you know just kind of carried the theme the same thing we tried to do on the outside i think he tried to do on the interior you know right on what color is it 
Uh, it's called Performance Red. It's off a 2019 Honda. And, uh, you know, we were looking for something that, uh, you know, he, he wanted a candy color on it. And I try to avoid using, you know, custom candies and stuff like that. You know, just for if you ever have to touch up and repair stuff, um, you know, so we looked at a factory color that, you know, kind of gave him the look he wanted, but, you know, had a little bit more repairability of a regular base coat clear coat. So that color is a tri coat, so it is a base coat with a candy over it, but it is just a little bit more user friendly than a Helsa color or some of these other colors, you know. Right on. What powers it? It is a big block Chevy. It's a 572 dark block. Uh, dart heads on it, and then that was built by a uh, competition marine uh, out in Missouri. Right now, uh, pump gas, the thing's probably making 850, 75. Uh, it's just got a ton of power to it. The injection on it, that's a Kinsler 8-stack injection on it. Yeah, so they built the motor, and then we just uh, we smoothed the block out a bit, you know, painted the motor nice. Uh, we built the headers from scratch here, just really trying to tuck them in in between the frame rail and all that. The exhaust had to be minimal, four and a half inch or five inch. So there's just a lot of stuff to kind of cram in that uh, that engine bay and that chassis and that. So that was a bit of a challenge on this. So. No doubt about it. Well, if um, before we run, if anybody wants to follow what you got going on, what's the best way to do that? You know, we are on Facebook. It's uh, Creative Rod and Custom. I, I don't update that too much. I do do a lot with Instagram, at Creative Rod and Custom, and then our website is creativerodandcustom.com. Awesome. Mark, I appreciate so much uh, you giving me some time today, brother. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate talking with you and uh, the feedback on the truck. So there you go from the 2022 Good Guys Columbus event. A very cool 1965 Chevy pickup truck from Creative Rod and Custom. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Hey y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.